Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to a bit more Hard Space Shipbreaker, where we're continuing to interrogate and sort of investigate all the physics of this uh, ship and see how we can sort of min max some things. Recently, we've been playing with the outer shell on the industrial geckos. We managed to actually separate an entire bloody clam lid amount of it, um, like cleanly as one piece, but it's so big. Um, we couldn't move it with the tethers that we have. But if we split it in half, it turns out to be about 15 ton per side. And then we can sort of start moving it slowly. So I was having a bit of a think, and I know it's dangerous with my big square head. We've got to be careful, you know, using the old electrons and, and firing off bloody synapses in there. Because, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous thing to be sort of entertaining. But what I was thinking is... What if we were to pressurize this ship, and before we go in it, we uh, we put some tethers on the sides out, out there, and then we we investigate doing these cuts. And I'm curious if maybe we can create a, a situation where we use the uh, the explosive decompression to blast the 15 ton halves off. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? It sounds like a disaster also. So I'm, I'm willing to give that a bloody go. So let's have a let's have a squiz. Oh look at this. Odin Mark V. It's like they saw us coming. So we're gonna have a squiz on that. So I suppose the first thing we'd want to do is tether the outsides. Uh, and then go inside through the airlock. The tethers hold for a while, but we're gonna have to be quick. Um, but I'm curious, like if we do just one side cut or something like that, that might be you know, like, just cutting one of the supports might be enough to decompress it. Alright, hang on. So if I were to do something like... Bloody that. And something like that. Alright, and then we go. Alright. Bit of an audio hitch. No, no, we've got to go up this side, right? Air pressure level increasing. Oh, I was going to say, why can't I see? Um, that's the back. Alright, so these are the sort of... the points that we found, right? So what if I... Oh, that is quite a hitch. Interesting that that didn't trigger the decompression. Oh jeez, it's like murky in here. Hang on. I don't have to bust that. Oh, 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 oh. What even just happened? What? <laughs> well, hey, you know what? My theory sort of worked. Can I go out through the door or something? No. Just what just happened? I mean, we technically decompressed it, but I I don't think we did any damage anywhere, right? Thirty-two. Okay, cool. So it is separate. Our clamshell of 32 ton is separated, right? But... But it's joined in the middle still.
Salvage destroyed. Please refrain from damaging salvage. Oh, hang on. So that's part of the cargo. That's sort of what I was trying to figure out. Like, what? Where are we attached? So one thing I'm not super clear on. Yeah, okay, so you're technically not part of it. Hang on, this is... Yeah. Alright. Is it as simple as the two doors touching in the center? They might have the glue property that we've sort of investigated. Do you know what I mean? Oh, hang on, hang on. No, no, no. That's not part of it, but that but that is part of it. That's part of it. That's part of the 32 ton, this center plate here. I mean, I get that these are part of it too. All right, well, what if I cut you guys? What happens there? Oops. Oh. That's it. We got a bingo! There we go. Fuck off. Alright, that's it. That was the that was the missing sort of buckle that I had to cut. I probably maybe I figured that out last time. But hard to tell. Now do these doors wanna sort of do stuff at all? I'm curious. No, so there's a gap because it's drifted apart. Okay, so interestingly, we can sort of slip out through here as well. Right. Don't do it to me. getting there. Yeah, look, it wants, it wants out, man. It's just this bullshit friction. I suppose I can push it with my head. Can I squeeze in here? Yeah, hot, hot, hot. Wishful thinking, I suppose. All right, well, it's definitely separate. Sad. 
See, that slips free. We figured it out though. I'm pretty I'm pretty chuffed with that to be perfectly honest. Look at that, all the way around. I suppose the jack makes a difference. Well, I thought it was moving for a sec there. So 16 tons overdoing it. Alright, so say... C, C, C... How much is that doorway? All right, so we're, oh, we're just shy of 15 ton. Bugger. Alright, the only other thing I can think of, which some guys were positing, is pulling the nose away. Like, it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to brute force the, uh, the friction component, right? Alright, so this thing just sprung straight away, which is nice. Yeah, some guys have been talking about cutting the cabin off, the, the connector on the other side there, which I think might be next. Alright, so this worked out fairly well. So we've removed all friction components there. How much does that weigh anyway? That's 10 ton. He's going, baby! Alright, we've got it. Alright, but the trick is that we've got to pull the front off. Look at that, the whole thing's going. With one tether. Oh my goodness. That's pretty cool. Alright, so we got there in the end and I didn't have to pull that off, so... It could probably do the, uh, the six... I don't know why there's not 16 ton there. It could just be because it's not fully symmetric. Cool. How good is that? All right, yes, so I think some people were positing that we're gonna have to do something about this nose section here. So I guess we gotta figure out what what's the cleanest cut. 
And it might actually be, funnily enough, this wall section. Oh, hang on. It's it's compressed. Well, that might be that might be helpful actually. Fuck it, let's see what happens. Air pressure level decreasing. That wasn't nearly as spicy as I thought it would be. Oxygen reserves are low. Note that excess carbon dioxide can cause damage to Link's equipment. Oh wait, I've got a minute. Oh, because I must have been hanging around in the uh, in the O2 for a while before. Okay, cool. All right, so apart from the fact my frame rate's dipping. There might be something said for busting that open from the inside. It's still pulling, is it? Oxygen reserves are critical. How good is that? Oh, I'm so I'm a proud dad right now. Um oh, open. Alright, so, and we got the same thing as the mackerels, these, these bloody furniture bits holding it all together. Oh, hang on. This whole ceiling panel blew off. Oh, wow, okay. Hmm. Alright, so we might, we might start interrogating that. Oh, I got zero dollars. <laughs> nice. I don't care, whatever. Yeah, so we're gonna start poking and prodding the, uh, the cockpit section, I think. Might be the go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So pulling off that front corner was was easy. It's just a couple of buckles. We just need to um, that sort of internal superstructure. We need to disconnect from the outer skin. But uh, yeah, the, the the split tops works quite well. The only other thing I'd be curious about, to be honest, is um, what if we kept them buckled together after all that? You know. So say I go in, I cut the front nose off on the on the front right section. I cut the cockpit front left section somehow. We'll work that out. I do the uh, whatever it is, the four or five cuts that we did internally. But instead of separating the two top halves, maybe then in its thirty ton state we can we can pull it away. Who knows? Be easy enough to test, I suppose. We just need to break free so we don't have to deal with the friction. So friction was our big problem. It wasn't even the glue interaction. It was just straight up a friction case. Mmm. That's pretty impressive how much, like, one little tether can pull on his own. You just got to give him a bit of time, a bit of space. Yeah. All right, that's good. We're getting there, team. Very cool. So I guess, yeah, we still got plenty of things to do next time. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, we might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.